The next step is to define independence among variables. Two variables are statistically independent if and only if, for any value of x and for any value of y, the joint density of xi and yi equals the marginal density of xi times the marginal density of yi. So basically, two variables are independent if and only if the probability that x equals a given value xi and the probability that i equals a given value yi is just the multiplication of the probabilities, that is, the probability that x equals xi times the probability that y equals yi. Okay, in our example, what did we have? What is the probability that x equals 0? So that's my xi. And at the same time, y equals 1. Remember, I am throwing the coin and rolling the dice simultaneously and observing the results. Well, it is 1 over 6. Now, if I look at the results separately, what is the probability that when I roll a coin, I get heads or x equals 0? That is 1 half. And what is the probability that looking at the event separately, when I roll a three-sided die, I get the number one. Well, the probability was one-third. Half times one-third equals one over six. And that is exactly what we had in our model. Here, heads and one, the probability that I flip a coin and get a head, and I throw a die and get a one, that's what we had modeled, the probability was 1 over 6. Know that that makes intuitive sense. Think about it. The outcome of a coin and a die are not influenced by each other. So intuitively, you know that these events are independent. How would the outcome of a coin somehow affect the outcome of a die? Those results are not related. But that leads to the following important question. Does the joint distribution equals the multiplication of the marginal distributions? Because the outcomes of a coin and a die are not influenced by each other? Or the other way around? The outcomes of a coin and a die are not influenced by each other, therefore the joint distribution equals the multiplication of the marginal distributions. Well, that's a chicken and egg problem, right? And when we are undergrad students, usually we look at the die and the coin and exercises would ask you, what is the joint density and are the events independent? Well, when we are in graduate school and we're looking at things more formally, the way it works is actually backwards. This is a theoretical model and when I was defining it, I made sure that the joint was equal to the multiplication of the marginals. That is why the variables or the theoretical variables are independent, because the model was created, defined it that way. Now, if the model created doesn't match the real life intuition or doesn't match the real experiments, then you throw the model away. So you look at the experiment and you propose a model. The model is defined such as the variables are independent. And the model is well defined because if you think about it intuitively, the outcomes are independent. The experiment of throwing a coin is independent of the experiment of throwing a die. Therefore, there's a match here between the model chosen and the real-life experiment.